Hey, Jeff with Cup of the Camper. I'm in this 1999 Shasta Sprite, this uh, little 21-footer Class C that I'm working on. Uh, the cab over area is all rotten, so I'm pulling the window. I'm um, starting out by pulling the window, and I'm going to get all this rotten wood out of here and uh, reframe in the front cap from the inside and reinstall the window. I'm probably going to end up doing this platform down here as well it's uh it's got a little bit of a bow and there's a few little rotten spots some soft spots right there you can probably see that and hear it so i'm going to redo this this is just that um 16th of an inch um luon on top of the uh the two by two framework and foam so any rotten framework that I'll uh, uh, come in contact with when I tear this Luon off, I'll go ahead and replace. You can see it's got just a slight bow to it, and on the outside you can see it as well. So I want to get that raised back up and flat. Um, so I'm I'm almost sure that when I get all this stuff taken off, the framing uh, of the cab over that wood framing in the front. And of course, all of this stuff up here is going to be rotten. So it'll just all get rebuilt. Um, ceiling panel. If you watched my last video, you saw all the stuff that I'm doing to this. I'm actually doing quite a bit more as well. Um, kind of involved into uh, a little bit different type of project where we're going all 12 volt. Um, except for the water heater. And I've got a Bosch uh, instant water heater for that. And he's going to be running a small gas generator. For the short durations that he'll need hot water so anyway um like i said this thing's going up to alaska and uh you know lots of sunshine in the summertime he's only using it in the summertime uh for when he goes up to alaska to go fishing and stuff so anyway i'm gonna get to uh demoing this whole cab over area and uh, i'll kind of show you how uh what my plans are to rebuild it once i get into it all right just so you can see how badly rotten this cab over area is get my this whole <laughs> whole thing is rotten so I'm pulling the seal around this window the the gasket and uh, I'll pop the window out from the outside and just lay it down on the inside cab over bed platform after that's done, I can remove my uh, clearance lights. Those are all going to be replaced. And I can check all the wiring while I'm in there as well. So just a guess, but I'm thinking that the clearance lights are the culprit here. This is all pretty bad. So yeah, this whole thing needs to be rebuilt. That is bad, bad, bad. Okay. So what I think I'm going to need to do is I need to get this ceiling panel out, which means 
I'll probably have to do the, the roof, the outside roof part and the ceiling part simultaneously, just so I have access to all of the bracing that goes across. Um, they're just, they're usually like two by threes. We'll see once we get in there. Um, but you can, you can see that all of this needs to be redone. And I think the clearance lights were the, were the reason why it leaked. Well, the clearance lights and there's a big leak, a big tear in the rubber roof in this corner. So water was just coming in for a long time. So I'm going to get my measurements before I tear all this stuff out, get my measurements uh, for all of the openings and, uh, and then I'll continue the demolition. Pretty certain this, pretty certain this light doesn't work anymore. So I'll or I will order some more ceiling mounted lights, uh, LED, get these converted over. Easy enough. Just to show you how bad this ceiling is. Now we'll get some shots on how this wiring is done. This wire, and of course, this was all rotten out, so it just came right out. That too. All right, so. So we'll go through this angled piece, just like on the truck camper. So. Get our, this is all rotten, so it's gonna come out pretty easy. Huh. So they don't use high density foam rounds up here. They just stuff it full of fiberglass batten insulation. So, I don't know if that's going to make it easier or harder, but we'll figure that out. This is all the same, so this will be easy to frame in. That'll all get replaced. All this will get replaced all the way up. Yeah, we should be good. And then once I get all this stuff out, get all my measurements, um, these are usually put in with a bunch of screws, um, that'll lift out, get my measurements and then I can get this, this bed platform surface out and, uh, get that replaced first. And then everything else builds on top of that. <clears throat> All right. I got some of this bracing and insulation out. I mean, this stuff is just saturated. It's so wet. I mean, you can see there's just water. This is soaking wet. All oh, this is soaking wet. So I'm going to have to let this dry out for a couple of days. I'm going to get this this uh, platform, the sleeping platform out of here because I know it's bad and uh, let it dry out for a couple of days before I um, reinstall the new pieces. So I've still got a little bit of this stuff to tear out around the window framing and the ceiling. All right, so I'm going to remove this piece of trim that goes around the cutout in the cab over area. And uh, that way I can have access to this piece of Luan and get that out of here. And that should expose the framework that's up front that's got the sag to it, a little bit of a bow. I can jack that up a little bit from the outside using some four by fours, get it nice and level, and then 
rebuild the platform. All right, so with these interior pieces removed, I can see that the bulkhead right here, the bulkhead is wet, which means the seal uh, between the cab and the box is compromised up in there and right along here. And I can see, I mean, I knew that this area, I knew that this area right here was needing to be resealed. But we'll do a, a new seal all around the cab over on both sides as well. The driver's side bulkhead uh, is not nearly as bad. A little moisture right here. But it's, uh, it's pretty solid. I am going to just remove this whole uh, top section here. Just, just this Luan with the wallpaper on it. The covering. And, and that way I can expose all of my framing members and see what's rotten and what's not. So to remove this, it's just a whole bunch of staples and glue. So just have to get at it with the putty knife, the cat's paw, and the uh, staple puller, you know, for all these. It's all the way around. So you folks that have watched my other videos on, uh, you know, pulling carpet when I redid my truck camper and just any, any place where there's just a bunch of staples. This little tool right here is, is key to getting this done quickly. Uh, and then just get a pair of, you know, wire cutters or some uh, needle nose pliers. Once you get in here, you know, it, it really does make quick work out of it. You can see just even one handed, you just pull one side up and then you go back with your wire cutters and just grab them and just go along all the, the whole perimeter and uh, get all the staples out. I'll put a link in the description of this video for a lot of these tools that I use, you know, the interior, uh, the trim tools, the putty tools, um, things like that. I'll just, uh, I'll put links to all these things. They really do make quick work out of a lot of this stuff. I use these for you know, pulling putty tape off of trim on the roof or on the side, uh, sidewall. Any trim that's got uh, butyl tape makes quick work out of it. Um, if you've also seen my other video, I use a, uh, an oscillator tool, um, you know, just like one of those little cutters um, with a, a blade attachment. And that really, quickly removes the butyl tape from trim pieces on the back side of trim pieces. Look at that, just soaking wet all through here.
Oh man. But I'm gonna let it dry out. So it looks pretty good. If I let it dry out, it should be all right. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll jack this, this framing up and uh, I might put one more um, two by three here um, on, on the inside of this lip right here and uh, you know screw it to the inside or pocket hole it to the uh, to the existing framework uh, while the the front of the camper is while the cab over is, is uh, leveled up with jacks uh, from the front side using four by fours and uh, and some slide out jacks, some slide out stabilizer jacks, and uh, get that all reframed in and get all the rest of this framed in. That way when I let off the, the pressure on the jacks from the outside, it'll all hold together. Yeah, look at this. Let this dry. I'm gonna get some fans on this and let it dry for a couple of days. Get all this. This is like cardboard backing material and it just holds the water. I need to get all this stuff out of here. You probably saw on my on the truck camper nose rebuild all this cardboard stuff and it just retains water. It just holds the water in and nothing ever dries out. I got to get all that out of there and then get some uh, some fans on this. I'm going to spray some Milgo, some some mildew and bullet killer on this and uh, you know, let it dry out for a few days. All right, Sony, I guess that's it for today. Uh, I'm gonna spray this stuff with some uh, mildew and mold killer, get some fans on it, let it run for a couple of days, let everything dry out real good. While it's drying out, I've got plenty of other stuff to do. I mentioned earlier in the video, we're doing a 12 volt refrigerator from Contour. Uh, we're doing a Bosch uh, instant water heater, a tankless water heater. Uh, we've got a, a big solar uh, array going up on the roof. Uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, charge controller, 2000 watt inverter, you know, a whole bunch of cool stuff. Uh, so, uh, you know, stay tuned for those. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go, please hit that subscribe button. That way you don't miss any of the new videos coming out and, uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video and we'll uh, catch you on the next one later.